The Aviation Moths Chapter 5 Hi, I'm looking snazzy. It's a ballet. No one is checking you out. Aw, uh, don't be like that. I can at least hope. I'm sorry, I need a second opinion. How do I look? Snazzy. See, I'm not the only guy checking himself out. Trying to pick up on the ladies too, huh? Actually, I'm on a date. My lady dragged me off here. I didn't think I had a suitable suit. You guys here for the ladies? Our baby sister is Rusula. Oh well, congratulations! Well, off to face my girl. Good luck, man. Romaine's not coming, huh? I doubt it. I just hope he doesn't cause a scene. Parading around and bragging that he's caught Scylla's friend. Honestly, I... I hope Romaine does not find him. I don't think anyone needs to be thrown in jail tonight. Oh well, Dad's waiting. Let's go. These seats are terrible! I thought you said we got the good seats. Yeah, I'm sorry. At least it's closer than back there. But you can't see from this angle. Are you wearing cologne? I think it's going to make me see. I'll make it up to you tonight. The show better be good. I've been looking forward to this night all summer. Did you get a hold of him? No. But the seat is here for him if he decides to come in late. Silas worked really hard on this show. Thought it would be nice if we all watched her together. Yeah, I think Scylla would actually prefer that Ramin were here right now. Out of the 2,000 people seated and chatting away, I doubted that Edelin was among them, especially after what Zizi and Jax told me. My dad, Jax, and Pierce were probably sitting in the Grand Tier somewhere, but I knew that Romain wasn't there. I considered reaching for my phone again to call Edelin. I just wanted to hear him tell me that he was alright. But the other girl suddenly appeared in the doorway. Five minutes till opening! Are you ready, Scylla? Yeah. Nerves still haven't gotten to you, eh? Huh? Vermice pushed her way through. As expected, the front of her leotard was pulled lower than the other girls to show more of her cleavage. How could Scylla be nervous when she's too busy worrying about her engineering friend getting thrown in the slammer? <gasps> Vermice! So, you're helping Zizi out with this too, aren't you? Well, no. But I just think it'd be funny to see the rat where he belonged. In a cage! <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help it. She needed a punch in the face. Oh my goodness! My, my, Vermis. Oh, you should have known better not to piss off the lead on opening night. Looks like we've lost a nymph. I sat on a cot in the dark. No one had talked to me in three hours, and I was getting hungry again. I'd already finished a bowl of vile soup and licked it clean, but mostly out of boredom. I wanted someone to come and tell me that I could leave, and I waited as quietly as I could, listening to all the sounds I could hear. A little while ago, I heard some men talking, and I was afraid they would get closer, but they were gone now. They've finally gone! Come on out! <sighs> they were persistent, weren't they? Psst. Yeah. Damn cops. Searching a place like hounds. We had the whole street defending you and they knew it. Searched every house, but couldn't find that hidden door. <laughs> Lucky you jumped into my place, huh? You sleep alright? I've had better. The night was a bit lonely. <laughs> well, let me get you something to drink. They said you were in trouble for building a plane. That's true. Oh! Why, everyone's talking about it. That's great, Eddie, that really is. 
I knew if anyone was going to do it, it'd be one of the Kenston kids. <laughs> Can it really fly? Yes, the feeling. It was wonderful. If anyone could tell people that aviation was alright, it'd be you. They still want me in prison. You'll be alright. You've got our support. Anyway, maybe we should head back and try to find your family. Thank you so much, Mrs. Giba. Yes, yes, it's nothing. Now come on. She peeked outside to see if it was really safe, then let me step out to the street. Other neighbors were gossiping down the block, but they looked delighted when they saw me. I briefly waved and then jumped into my house across the street. The police had overturned furniture and ripped up some of the upholstery. Shards were scattered upon the floor and they crunched under our shoes. No one else was home, and with Mrs. Giba's help, I turned the couch upright and found my cell phone on the ground. Fortunately, it was on silence, so the police hadn't found it, but I had over 30 missed calls from Scylla. I was about to call her back when Mr. Helap came through the front door. Uh, Eddie, uh, Mr. Helap! We heard them! What's wrong? They're going out to the planes to find the hangar, and they're going to destroy the plane! Uh, I... Uh, well, don't just stand there, go! Your bike is still behind the shack. Be careful, Adeline. There was no way I was going to allow them to destroy the plane. I barely allowed myself time to catch my breath. I hopped right onto my bike and started the ignition. Moments later, I had already ridden through the neighborhood. I only allowed myself to hear the sound of my own heart beat. Everything else seemed to become silent. The police couldn't have gotten too far ahead of me, especially by foot. I wasn't sure what to do when I saw them, especially if they were armed. But as soon as I cleared out into the plains, I knew it was just a matter of seconds before they spotted me. I only tried to get past them as fast as I could. That's him! What's that thing he's riding on? It's a bike, you idiot! I only hoped that the law prohibiting firearms had been passed. I didn't have to worry about them catching up to me, but I still wasn't faster than a bullet. There was no way they could catch up. There was just no way. I kept telling myself this, yet my heart beat faster. Just outside the hangar, I jumped off my bike. The engine was still on and ran into the side wall. I threw the door open. My nerves were making me unsteady, but I hurried to open the large sliding doors. As I was running back to the plane, I caught a glimpse of the others outside. They were still yards away, but catching up quickly. I grabbed the bag of Scylla's gadgets and climbed into the cockpit. I had strapped myself into the pilot's seat, but the sliding door still hadn't completely opened. My hands were on the yoke and was ready to lift off. There were only a few feet left till clearance, and Romain and the cops were just outside. I decided to risk it. A little damage to the wings was still better than allowing them to destroy him. And I was lucky, but I had no time to bask in my glory. The others had made it into the hangar just as I had rolled out. Bless my soul! He's actually flying! He's getting away. He... He got away. Why didn't you shoot him? We were this close! We're not permitted to carry arms. Why not? We could have stopped him. Not allowed to carry arms? We could have shot him! We could have stopped him! Ugh! There's no way we can stop him or not. We'll never catch up to Ow! What the bends? What is that? <laughs> it looks like... <laughs> Looks like we've got our guns. He can't go too far. You there. Yes? We could arrest you for carrying that, you know. Not tonight. No. Not tonight. I'm going to take care of this now. You go back to the station. We'll let you know when you can... Pick up the pilot.